John, I've yeah. got a question for the cabinet members, please. Not a statement, a well, question. Well, uh, I've been asking to comment on what I've said, because I've been listening to semantics at the moment, because in actual fact, this is a, a proposal that is going to come forward. And if we don't deal with it now, take into consideration, then, and we come to the conclusion that we don't like the amendment proposal, we do need to deal with it again, won't we? And it seems to me we might as well deal with the matter now as, as a future debt.
Going back to the relevant point that was made by the move by the Labour group at the site committee, that they needed all the information in relation to the businesses and local communities in relation to what was going on. We have not received any of that information yet. Why are we making this decision without those who talk? Yeah, I think there's two points there. The, 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 the first point is that
Andy Wood, the secretary of Arrow Park Golf Club. If you'd like to come forward, thank you. And can I just remind you, Andy, and of all the witnesses who are going to come forward, you've got five minutes. Thank you. You press the green button.
certainly care. Basically, as a golf club, we try and promote our park golf course for the benefits of the rural community. We basically take great pride in our golf course, and we try and promote that through our website, our Facebook page, which has very quite a lot of visitors, and we pr try and promote through our various golf competitions during the year. One is which a local charity competition, well, it's an open charity competition in June, which is raised basically the cause of uh, Clear House for Children's Hospice Will. We have over 180 golfers visiting on that deck, and they can easily see basically the benefits that our park gives to the local community and the wider public. So I would suggest we basically try and promote the golf course as best we possibly can. And we take, as I said, if we can try and prove anything in any way, shape or form, then we will do. But we've had, I, can I just add, I have had no consultation as a sector of the golf course, uh, sorry, sector of the golf club in these car parking charges and how it will affect not just our membership but other visiting people who wish to play golf or use the golf facility.
Goes and number seven hours. Yeah, well, there you go. So you've got all that space to fill for seven hours. Which won't be quite that.
from, from your feedback as secretary, whether the, the feedback that you're getting from your guard members that you, you would expect to see a reduction of people using the golf course to the extent of the 30% that keeps being in the back of the Yeah, I'd like to just say that within my statements suggested that after conveying to my members, Just remind you why I'm pleased that it's five minutes. tend to mother and look after vulnerable people from the park. Whilst the will is largely a very affluent place, there is also many residents who can't afford the proposed charges. Their inability to continue visiting the park may well affect their health. This is particularly evident in the number of families who bring their children to the park at the weekends. Similarly, many groups of runners and other activity club groups specialised in healthy outdoor pursuits have indicated they may seek alternative venues. Some already have. And we're losing friends, memberships also. In the absence of public transport, many pensioners receive lit from families and friends who would be deterred from the continuing practice of the car parking and all 
also petrol prices and car parking charges all over. Most importantly, we advise that we are now required to contribute £25,000 per annum directly to the council. Due to this, we are now launching a vigorous programme of events, many during the daytime throughout the park. We are, however, already meeting with reluctance from potential clients who feel that their guests will not be happy paying parking charges. It may well be that the impact of these charges could make it impossible for us to realise a required financial target. For this reason, above all others, the cancellation of these may be imperative. In the event of these charges being imposed, would an annual license be valid in all the parks? That's any questions? <coughs> thank you. Thanks, Myra. Thank you very much. Have you, any other members got any questions? Leslie. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Mina, really, for outlining just what, what you actually do for particularly the vulnerable people who visit. I was, I was touched really by what you mentioned about particularly older people who were lonely because that clearly is recognised as one of the biggest killers of older people, the fact that they're lonely. And to have a facility clearly like you provide at uh, Boyden Park is, is second to none really. And also um, you obviously have a number of people who, who visit with dementia yeah. and clearly rural council, hopefully now most members are dementia friends in the is dementia friendly. Could, could you just perhaps expand a little bit on the type of activities that you do with the lonely people, um, and particularly with the people? We have as well. people, we have music, um, volunteers come in and play music. Um, we interact with them. A lot of the older people also volunteer, such as at the moment we're looking to reinstate the clock tower. This is all being done by retired people, and they're happy to do it. Um, we, we do all sorts, too many things to go over, but mainly it's the interaction of the groups. And they love to volunteer and do things at the park. You know, it, it's, it is a magic place for the park. And the, very, the people are so generous because the, food, the cafe is non-profit making. Our money comes through donations and book sales. And the, the people who have money are generous. They're, they're the ones who bring in money. And we know we can bring in this money, if it's going to the right place, to the park. And the friends are more than happy to do this. In fact, the friends were growing until this came up. And now we've sort of uh, come up against a bit of a brick wall uh, because they're, they're worried they're going to have to pay. Uh, we've had two part parties uh, cancelled because of when they're coming in, they feel that the guests will not want to pay. These are kiddies' parties. Now, these are all things that we need to do to raise money. Um, you know, as well as loving everybody, looking after everybody. We understand that we have to raise money or that the council needs to raise money. And we're willing to accept that. We're in a, a fortunate position that we can accept that because we are in a more affluent area than, say, our own farm. We are fortunate. So I can't plead our case and the other parks' case is strong enough. The parks are needed. <coughs> I'm 71. I remember going to the park with a bottle of pop and some sandwiches because it was free. I'm not being romantic. This is what the park's about. The trains, with the trains are free. It's a donation. It's for everybody. This is what the parks are about. And I would say passionately, <coughs> passionately, because I love our people. Don't 
take it away. Even though you've reduced the charges to some people, 50 pence an hour is a lot of money. They come into my cafe and they can have a cup of coffee for that 50 pence with a scone. That's their treat. And we're fortunate enough to go, oh, it's, that's pathetic. It's not pathetic. It's real life. This is life. At the schools, can afford papers and books and so on. I hear about all car parking charges. And I've pleaded. That's all I can do is plead that we don't have these charges. And the friends are more than happy to go out there, their money to run this car and keep our rangers in a job if it's possible. More than happy. So it's up to you guys. Thank you. 